Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome. Today's guest is Ian Viner, professional CV writer who's helped senior executives and directors to produce a top quality CV to help you secure those important interviews. Ian is unique in that he meets all of his clients in person and spends all day with you to draw out the key skills and achievements. Welcome, Ian. Good afternoon, Richard. Um, describe your perfect prospect. Well, I specialize in helping senior executives and directors, director level clients, who are either out of work or who are seeking to move into a new position. And that currently includes non-executive directors um, who are already in a position and looking to perhaps um, take a, a one day a month role uh, in addition to their current uh, responsibilities. Okay, and how do you help them, Ian? Well, I help them to write a first-class CV, which really sells them. That's, that's the major thing I'm looking to do. Um, in most cases at the moment, I would say that they're underselling themselves because they don't have the right skills on their CV and they have no measurable or tangible um, achievements. Um, and I find that most people are incapable of doing this for themselves. Um, they need my level of expertise. And in particular, you know, they need somebody to sit down with them and draw that information out of them. Okay. And and how do you solve their problems? Well, I think, you know, by asking the right questions. Um, clearly, when you're with somebody all day, you know, there's a lot of probing that goes on. Um, but I need to do this to draw the information out of them. Um, and knowing what's required on a CV to secure the interviews, I know the right questions to ask. And people come to me because they want that personal service and they know that they'll get a quality a quality service at the end of the day. What are the one or two popular misconceptions about CV writing? Well, that's, that's pretty easy to answer because um, uh, a lot of clients think that all CV writers are the same. Um, simply, that's, that's not the case. There are different levels of CV writers. Um, some companies only provide a literally a return by email service, which, you know, if, if people only want to spend £30 a month, that's, that's fine. Um, then you get companies who provide telephone only services. Um, and generally speaking, these companies um, give you about an hour on the phone, which are OK you know, at a, at a certain level. Um, but again, they're not going to provide the sort of quality that I produce simply, again, because I meet people in person and spend all day with them. Um, so um, really, people need to, clients need to understand what level of service they are being um, offered um, when they're talking to the CV writing company. Okay. And What's the main reason a person that's approached you for CV writing help decides not to buy? Is it price, time commitment? A, num a number of reasons. Um, it could be price. Um, it tends not to happen um, at, the, at the level that I'm targeting. But, um, you know, if I get a, perhaps a middle manager uh, come along who's been out of work for six months, you know, he, he's generally struggling. He generally just doesn't have the money in his pocket to pay for my service. Then he'll take the free review. So the first thing I do with all of my clients is provide them with a free CV review. You know, and there's no, there's no con, there's no catch, there's no commitment, there's no obligation to, to follow up and, and buy the service. So, you know, clients have got absolutely nothing to lose by getting some very, very good free advice. Um, some people think that they can do it for themselves, um, which clearly they can't. Um, sometimes people come along and say, oh, you know, thank you for the offer of the free review, but um, I don't need it because my CV is fine. It's getting me interviews. But is it getting them, you know, the right interviews? You know, are they going for the right level job? Um, 
I'm afraid most people are a bit short sighted um, and don't realize the importance of investing in themselves. Um, these very same people will go out and spend £500 on a new television, £500 on a new holiday, £500 on a new dress even if it's a female. Um, but they won't spend whatever the price is um, on you know, investing in their whole future career. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Is is it true that and uh, lots of people do undersell themselves on CVs? Totally. Um simply because simply because they don't really know how to do it and it's not something we get an awful lot of training at. Um depending on when you leave school or you know even if you go through the university system there's not a great level of career coaching or even CV writing uh, for students at that level. Whether you do or whether you don't go through university, um, you start work and, you know, perhaps you've, you know, gone through your first job and you get made redundant after five years. Who helps you at that point um, with a CV? There are various online templates, which I don't think very much of, to be quite honest. Um, or you might get, you know, ask your friends for a bit of help. You might ask a parent. Um, but there are, of course, an awful lot of experienced people out there who can help such clients. But it's essentially, you know, there are a number of questions that clients can ask um, when going through this process. So, well, there are certainly five things, five types of bad habits that I find on a CV. For example, um, most people will have too many du basic duties and responsibilities, which merely reflect what they do on a daily on a daily basis. That's not going to get you through a door. In other words, there are no measurable achievements, and there is no evidence of any tangible results. That is exactly what is going to produce the wow factor, and 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 get the reader to. Or capture the reader's attention. Yes, yes. The other, de the other debatable, you know, subject is is the length of a CV, and you know there are hundreds of articles on on the internet about how long a CV should be. Me personally, I will never write a CV that's longer than two pages. Why? Because nobody's going to read it. Yes. Yeah. All all the experts say that you've got you know ten seconds, twenty seconds to capture the reader's attention. Well, if that's the case, nobody's going to read five or six pages. Yes. Um, in some cases, you know, your career history goes back too far. Um, if it's a, shall we say, slightly more mature client um, who's, you know, let's say, uh, for example, over 50, uh, he might decide to list all of his career history going back to 1980. Um, which immediately tells the reader what your age is. It's not necessary. You don't need to provide um, the, all of the older jobs. Unfortunately, there is ageism in this country, whether you like it or not. And um, it's far better to go back um, and concentrate on the last 10 years. But if you're, if you're that age and experienced, then I wouldn't have a problem going back 20 years, but certainly no further. Okay. Um, and of course, people do not sell themselves because they don't have the key skills nor any key achievements on the top of the front page, which is where which is where they should be. Okay. So all of these factors contribute to the fact that, you know, in most cases, people just are not selling themselves. OK, brilliant. Um I was going to ask another question, actually, Ian. Um, hmm. How much personal information do you suggest people reveal on their CV? Um, are we talking now about sort of name, address, telephone number? Correct. Or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, for it does it does vary slightly depending on the the type of candidate. But yes. Um, for example, you know, for a very senior level person. Um, at the top of the CV, I would just have their name, a mobile telephone number, and an email address, making it very easy for the reader to 
know where and how to contact them. It's quite, it's quite amazing how many people have their contact details at the end of page four, um, where, where people are just not going to find it. Um, yes. And I've even heard recruiters say that these types of CVs will go straight in the bin. Yes. Um, you do get people that put the contact details in the, you know, in the footer on every single page. I think that's going a little bit too far, and I tend to advise against this. Yes. Um, a lower-level person um, may well want to include their home address because the recruiter is interested to find out um, if the person lives in a commutable distance to the job. Okay, yes. Um, but um, I would suggest that if you're at director level, then that information is not, not necessary. Um, you know, you do get situations where a recruiter will not ring a client because, a candidate, I should say, because they've automatically deemed um, that it's too far for the, client, the candidate to travel. Well, you know, <laughs> let the candidate decide that. Um, they may know a shortcut. They may know that there's a good bus route or they can get a train or whatever, whatever means they can uh, use to get to the job. Um, so in most cases, I personally leave the address off. It's not, not necessary. In terms of marital, marital status, not interested. Um, in terms of uh, being a car owner, it's irrelevant. Um, do they have a driving license? In most cases, that's also irrelevant. Um, age, date of birth, absolute no-no. Um, what else would people want to put on? You know, sometimes you get, you know, married with three children. You know, I'm sure they're lovely kids, and uh, but it's not, you know, it's not relevant for for a candidate CV. Excellent, brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Ian. I think you've uh, answered the questions and put to rest a number of popular misconceptions. So thank you very much for your time today. Um, My pleasure. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.